Okay, hi everybody. I can see some people are starting to join there now. So I hope you are all doing very well today. And you're very, very welcome to our second product update webinar and a big thank you to everyone who's joining us today. I'll give you a few more minutes to join as I can see the numbers are still going up. Um, but while we're waiting, I'll just give a quick introduction to myself. I am Nicole Cunningham and I am the product marketing manager for Dean Library here at Technology from Sage. And I'll be joined today with your host, I'll be your host for today. And I'm joined with Becca Richards, um, the Lean Library Senior Product Manager. Uh, so today we will be running through SIT and say the SIT campus integration, which is coming up uh, and a little look at the roadmap of what's coming next. Um, but before I hand it over to Becca, if you want to just go to the next slide, Becca, um, I'll run through a quick bit of housekeeping. Um, so just please make sure your audio and visual settings I check our audio and visual settings and if somebody could please let me know in the chat or the Q&A box that you can hear me and see the slide um, and that I'm not just talking to myself that would be great um, and if you cannot hear me or see the slides we recommend leaving and rejoining and just uh, double checking your audio and visual settings and as always please do connect with each other in the chat and get the discussion going um, and in regards to the questions please feel free to ask any questions via the chat or Q&A box and we'll ask either answer them live or via the chat or at the end of the session. Um, and lastly, the webinar has been recorded today and it will be shared with you in an email in the next few days and also in the newsletter in April. Um, so I think that's all from me. So I'll hand you over to Becca now. Lovely, thanks, Nicole. Hi, everyone. Um, lovely to see you all again um, for our second monthly product update webinar. Um, so as Nicole mentioned, uh, the agenda for today is going to be predominantly centered around our latest release um, as of today, which is Lean Library Site. Um, and this is the version two release um, of our site tool. Um, so essentially, uh, we launched the version, like first version of site in February of this year. And uh, site version two is ho following hot on the hill. So we're going to see what's new in that regard. And then I'm going to give a very exciting uh, sneak peek of an integration that we've undertaken with uh, Sage Campus um, around um, sort of trying to uh, solve the problem of how can we help you as librarians and your patrons navigate um, this sort of new world of um, AI, like gender, generative AI, um, especially ChatGPT, um, and using that within research. Um, so I'll touch on that very shortly. And then I will, if I have time, I hope I do, because I didn't last week or last month, um, I'll be going over some roadmap themes for 2024 and some immediate things that you can kind of watch out for. Fantastic. So I uh, will kick things off with, uh, with site version two. So um, just to recap, we launched the um, citation tool within Lean Library uh, in February 2024, um, so just a couple of months ago. And um, this essentially brought a new functionality to the Lean Library extension, um, whereby users can uh, copy and paste specifically article citations. So we launched this with just um, sort of like DOI driven content, uh, so specifically uh, with articles. Um, and it only appeared, as I'm sure some of you will have noticed, on the um, alternatives possible pop-up. So it didn't appear on the alternatives achieve pop-up. Um, so this was something that we wanted to rectify in the next um, iteration. So I will go over more about that in the next slide, in my next slide. Um, but this also introduced a uh, citation generation modal in the extension. So when the user clicks that get citation button, as you can see on my right now, selects a style, the citation style will also populate and the user will be able to, to copy it. And they'll see a little pill that uh, tells them that their citation has copied successfully. Um, all of these citation styles are pulled from the citation style language repository, um, which is an open source repository that you can find and add styles to yourselves in GitHub. Um, this is uh, a particularly nice 
where, like solution to um, providing citation styles, in my opinion, because this means that you can add your own institution specific citation styles to the CSL. And because we pull all of the styles from the CSL, you can pull your own institution specific styles through to our citation style drop down. Um, so this was essentially um, site at its initial launch. And it's worth saying that this is available for all of our subscribing institutions. Um, so from access, Lean Library Access, all the way up to Lean Library Futures. So it's available for all of our, uh, all of our librarian partners. So um, moving on to site version two, um, in terms of what's new, what you can look out for, um, and what to look forward to. Um, obviously, we released uh, site as of today, but due to the way that browser extensions work, there there may be some lead time um, based on how long it takes for our new version of the extension to be accepted onto the various browser extension stores. Um, but you'll be seeing it imminently. Um, so the first improvement that we made uh, with uh, site version two is that we've um, provided the ability for the extension to pick up um, ebook references. So when you land on an ebook page, as you can see here, so it might be the fact it might be the case that your um, interlibrary loan form pops up, but the student or user might want to select a citation style and and copy it. So they can generate the citation style there, as you would expect. And that is essentially that. It's very simple. It works in exactly the same way that it does for articles. Um, but the extension will just pick up um, the uh, metadata type of ebooks and monographs and um, all sort of associated content um, types. Um, so this will appear on all of the pop-up um, states that you might expect with um, within the sort of um, book alternatives flow. So that includes licensed alternatives, open access, ebook alternatives, um, and order form, uh, ISBN driven, um, the pop-up for the ISBN driven order form. So. Um, and this will also appear on all of the access to access achieved states within the um, ebook flow as well. So that leads me on to uh, the next improvement that you can expect to see um, with site version two, and that's that we've extended this tool to um, all access and alternative states. So as I mentioned um, previously in the first iteration of site, um, this was only available, this tool was only available for uh, alternatives possible states. Um, but now we also have extended this tool to show the achieved states. So as you can see here, that includes um, both licensed alternatives achieved states and open access alternatives achieved states. Um, so you can see that this will just appear rather than having the dual um, call to action buttons, because there's no call to action button um, in this pop up without the site tool. So previously, before we launched this new feature, um, now you'll see that get citation button in the pop ups there as well. And this will also be the case for um, access possible and access to achieve states for all of the providers that we that we cater for as well. And uh, next up, um, a particularly exciting um, addition, which has been um, the subject of a lot of feedback. So it's really nice to be able to deliver this um, quite soon after the initial launch of, of site is um, the ability for you as the librarian admins to select your institution's preferred styles within the dashboard. Um, so essentially all you would need to do, as you can see from this screen grab here, um, is to navigate to your integration settings um, menu, open that up, click citations, and this is where you can also enable your citations, um, but you'll see an additional field there um, for favorite styles. 
And um, from this menu, you can deselect a citation style if you want to get rid of it, or you can search um, the drop down um, for any style you like, but um, we've particularly pulled through the long names of these citation styles, generally speaking, because when we pulled these styles through from the CSL, they don't include um, in the short name um, all of the versions of that citation style. So you'll just get a very long list of APAs if we didn't pull through the long um, name of the citation. So you just need to search for the full name of the citation. I could search for Oscola there because um, it's included within the long name. But for a lot of um, citation styles, as you can see here, if you search for American, you'll pull up the, the long names of, of all of these styles, whereas you, know, you might just call um, American Journal of Science AGS. Um, but if you search for the long name, you'll be able to find it comprehensively. And you can see when you select those styles, they'll appear there. And then you cl click save and you'll be notified that your citation styles have been saved. Then when you go through to the extension view and you click get citation, when you select from the drop down, your users will be able to see your selected popular styles. So these are directly pulled through from the selections that you've made in the dashboard. And that's that. And this is um, obviously in response to you needing to direct your users towards the right citation styles. We appreciate that the citation style language um, repository contains thousands of citation styles. So your students, researchers need to be able to find the citation styles that they'll most likely need to use as quickly as possible. And then my next slide. So. Um, the uh, last improvement that we've made is to um, include a message if the extension recognizes that there is potentially some metadata missing within the citation, within the, uh, the sort of the gen generated citation. So um, essentially how Lean Library Cite works is that we use a combination of the citation style language repository and um, a tool called CiteProc to generate the structure of the citation. And then we do an additional call to metadata repositories, um, such as Crossref for articles or our internal, our internal metadata service um, to then populate that citation structure with the actual citation, the meat of the citation, so the metadata fields. Um, we're obviously dependent on those metadata services. Um, and I'm sure as many of you are aware, ISBN metadata, for example, can be patchy. Um, and we're sort of dependent on um, the people who are inputting those, those metadata fields. So if it does look like there's a, um, meta a required metadata field that's missing, um, the extension will just, um, at the bottom, above copy citation, will just notify the user that they might want to just double check their citation to make sure that there's no um, metadata missing for them. And um, this is essentially so um, your users aren't copying inadvertently an erroneous citation. So um, that wraps up the improvements that um, we've provided as a result of our latest iteration of, of site. Um, and now I'm going to give you a bit of a sneak peek of our um, integration with Sage Campus. And um, we are launching this next week. So you'll be seeing this um, very soon. So it's worth noting just straight off the bat that this is um, provided to our partner libraries in the form of an onboarding feature. So this is a feature that's specifically, um, that's specific to the workflow for LibGuides and Lean Library Futures packages. So if you're a Lean Library access client, this um, won't be available to you. Um, so I'm just gonna actually play this demo video now so you can see it in action. Um, but essentially, when you are on a domain within the openai.com um, 
location. The onboarding that is part of uh, the Sage Campus course will pop up and it will show the user a course that they can use um, to learn more about the art of ChatGPT interactions. And from here, um, the um, onboarding will open in a new tab when they click select uh, start course. And this is because we don't want users to feel like they have to complete a course within this small um, iframe environment. And we want them to be able to open it up into a new tab so they can start the course from there. Um, so in essence, how does this work? It's very simple. We use our onboarding feature uh, to surface a course that has been written specifically um, by Sage Campus um, around the subject of using ChatGPT. Um, this will then show in the pop-up and the students can use it from there. And this prompts the students to um, learn about using AI directly when they need it. So it's all about that point of need instruction. Um, the course is free to access. Um, so you don't need a Sage Campus subscription to be able to provide this to your users. Um, and as I said, we'll be releasing this next week on April 8th. So if I go on to the next slide. Um, so for our Workflow for LibGuides and Lean Library Futures customers, this view will look very similar. Um, this is our the page in which you can set up your onboardings. Um, so how do you set this course up? Well, we've provided this course um, to our users as an onboarding, um, and it will obviously surface this, this course in their workflow when they need it, um, if you wish to turn it on. Um, this is a like completely an opt-in integration. So you'll just see from this screenshot here that um, when you receive, when this goes live, you will see an onboarding um, appear in your list of onboarding setups. And to be able to enable it, all you need to do is just um, activate it essentially. So it goes from not displaying to displaying, um, as you can see in this screenshot here. Um, and this just means that you can deploy it if you want to, whenever you want to. It means that you can check the course before you enable it. Um, all you would need to do is go to your Lean Library Futures menu, then to onboarding, then to content. And we provide the URL in which we've hosted the course um, within that content page. So then you just need to open it up and you can go through the course yourself to just make sure it aligns with the way you want to be teaching about um, AI and, and using ChatGPT in research. Um, another nice aspect of this, uh, providing this course, is that on completion, the user will be able to download a learner certificate that shows that they've completed a course in this area. Um, and for you, in terms of um, measuring engagement with this, um, you'll be able to track the certificate downloads in your dashboard. So you'll see that um, the name of the onboarding is uh, hyperlinked um, as opposed to the other onboardings that you might have in your onboarding setup page. And this means that when you click on um, the, the name of the onboarding, a little modal will just pop up showing you the total number of downloads. Um, and just worth me mentioning that everything I mention here um, will be included in a support article that we'll send out at the time of the release. So you don't need to remember all of this, um, but it will take you through all of the steps of how to enable it, how to view your um, total number total, total number of certificate downloads um, in your dashboard. Um, and it will give you some information about the course itself as well. And I will just give you some quick sort of um, top level points on the course itself and the benefit that it brings to your patrons. Um, so the course is, um, the course instructor uh, is Lee Lo, um, who is the Dean of uh, the College of University of Libraries um, and Learning Sciences at the University of New Mexico. And he is a particular subject matter expert in this field. Um, 
It's also worth noting that there is a webinar. He's going to be hosting a webinar with us on this, um, I think at the end of the month, but maybe Nicole can pop the um, registration for that in the chat at some point over the course of this or follow up maybe at the end of this um, uh, webinar with the with the link to subscribe just in case you're interested in um, sort of hearing uh, Lee talk about uh, the process of um, compiling this course, working with Sage Campus and the benefits of providing this course at a uh, point of need. But essentially this course um, in a nutshell is designed to equip, equip learners to develop structured prompt engineering skills. Um, and it covers uh, prompt writing, prompt engineering um, and implementing the, the clear framework, which the course um, uh, fully sort of uh, goes through and categorizes. Um, so the the kind of the key benefits for this is it's it's instant access. So there's no sign up required. You don't need to log into a Sage Campus environment. Um, it's just immediately available um, through the Lean Library um, onboarding modal. Um, it's a quick course, so it's only six, uh, thirty to sixty minutes of learning. It includes activities and quizzes, tips and hacks, and as I mentioned, the user will. Um, be able to download a certificate of completion after the course. So um, I might just take a pause for any questions. I'm just seeing whether there's anything in the chat. Um, but it looks like Nicole's just put the yeah, link to the... Yeah, you're all good, Firehead. Yeah. Nothing so far. Yep. Okay, awesome. Just um stick any questions in the chat, guys, and do shout out if um if you have any questions. Um but I will now move on to our kind of roadmap themes for 2024. Before I dive into sort of um the higher level themes, I do just want to give everyone a bit of a update on our printbook alternatives feature. Um I touched on this last month. But um, I'll go over it again, just so you kind of know what's coming through the pipeline very soon. Um, so for those of you who didn't attend last month um, in our product update webinar, we are working on um, hooking up to the kind of core um, or sort of main um, discovery systems. Um, so EBSCO EDS, Ex, Ex Libris Primo, including VE, and OCLC Wellcat WMS um, to be able to surface um, your print book alternatives prior to any click through. So some of you might remember, so you can kind of see through this graphic here, we introduced a check for print link um, at the end of last year. Um, this directs the user straight to your discovery um, in case they wanted to um, see whether the item is the item that they're looking for the print book that they're looking for is in your library's holdings however we don't know at this point whether that's actually the case so they will click through um come to your library's holding and like holding information system and if it's there um then it will appear but if not then at least they are in your library's environment we want to go one step further with this by um, connecting to these discovery services um, to be able to query your library's holdings to create a unique pop-up within the pop-up hierarchy that we provide to our users, um, which shows when a print book is available in your library's physical holdings. Um, so the user can then click um, the call to action button, which will take them through to um, the location of that of that print book. Just one thing to note on this is we won't be pulling through actual um, sort of location information. So um, shelf number, call number, anything like that. Um, the user can do that in your library's environment, but we won't be pulling that um, granular information through to the pop up um, as we want to get them to your to your library's environment and engaging with it. Um, this is part of the Lean Library Access Package, so it's available to all of our Lean Library customers. Um, and another nice um, sort of aspect of this is that um, even if 
you do have a digital copy available. So the um, extension lands on your ebook alternatives notification. If the user navigates to the side tray, they'll be able to see um, the print book notification there if they prefer to access the title in print, if it's available. Great. Um, fantastic. So now I'm going to dive into some of the higher level themes of work that we're looking at in Q2 and beyond. Um, so one of those themes is around stats. Um, so we know how important um, it is to gain useful, actionable insights on um, your lean library browser extension usage. So how your users are engaging with, um, with lean library. And um, we want to sort of um, deepen the extensions capabilities around providing you uh, sort of like deeper insights. So um, I'm sure many of you will be familiar with our stats dashboard. Um, and that last year we introduced a stats insights page, which takes the raw data that's available in your stats dashboard and um, combines it into sort of more digestible um, headings. So um, how much time have we saved your patrons? Um, how many open access um, content items have your users accessed? That's all available to see within your stats insights dashboard. We want to kind of progress this, um, work on your feedback um, on sort of like stats and reporting, provide broader um, reporting on your users and the content that they're using. Um, so something we've looked in, we've been looking into for a while is um, around user segmentation. Um, so you can also tailor your extension to your um, specific end users and the sort of the user groups that they sit within. So whether they're an undergraduate student or an early career researcher, whatever it might be. Um, and we also um, just want to work through the stats dashboard in and of itself and just make sure all of the signposting we have within there is um, clear and easy to use. The next very, very exciting thing that we're um, looking forward to bringing to you later in the year is um, the integration with our in-house reference manager called SciWheel, um, which some of you might be familiar with. I'm sure you've heard um, various people at Technology from Sage talk about SciWheel, but um, essentially what we want to do through an integration is bring all of the SciWheel extension features into the Lean Library extension. So this includes a real um, sort of cornucopia of features, um, reference management features um, that will really help us hit more points within the student and researcher workflow at point of need. Um, so this includes um, saving references. Um, in SciWheel, you can create projects, which are both either individual projects or um, group projects so you so your users can collaborate say within an assignment or for um, research centers across a lab um, they can uh, uh, sort of collaborate on um, sort of projects and pool references as a group as well as like annotate and sort of discuss those references and then also um, within the SciWheel extension, you can um, highlight, like add colored highlights to your documents, um, whether that's PDF, PDFs or web pages. And you can also add notes, which are then saved in the SciWheel backend, um, which is essentially a, a web app, um, which all of our SciWheel users use to um, accumulate their references and their notes and, and their annotations. This feature, uh, or the features that sort of come from SciWheel into the Lean Library extension will be um, opt-in. So you don't need to, um, you don't need to have them if you don't want them, if you support other um, reference management uh, software, but um, this will really sort of grow Lean Library as a tool um, within the sort of the researcher workflow. So there'll be more opportunity to provide um, sort of 
help and aid to your users at their point of need, essentially. Um, another really exciting um, improvement we're making is uh, feature templates. So we know that you as librarians are very short on time. So we want to save you time by providing um, best practice templates that you can easily deploy um, to your users. So we're going to be doing this with Assist um, to start with and then expanding it to um, uh, your users. Um, and we've seen a sort of direct correlation with um, the sort of engagement with and usage of um, Lean Library and the sort of the increased number of assist messages. So we really want to help you um, demonstrate that return on investment of Lean Library um, by helping you sort of create more assist messages as well. And then there's just a list of um, UX improvements there that we're also working on um, as we speak. So the ability to customize the side tray, creating creating an extension pause timer. So when the you your users like pause the extension, it will kind of come back to them after a while. So again, to help you sort of keep your usage at a good level. Um, but a lot of these were requested through feedback. So um, we uh, sort of take note of them and, and want to work through them. So I'm going to jump onto questions now because I saw one come through the chat and I appreciate that I'm running a minute over <laughs> as I usually do. So um, Nicole, is it okay for me to take the question that's just come through? Yeah, yeah, I answered it, but you can reiterate. Oh, fantastic, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> that's brilliant, thanks, you're saving me time. Um, yeah, okay, so Nicole's answered that, but um, Sala Campbell asked, uh, did I hear that the Art of Chat GPT course isn't available if you have uh, Lean Library access rather than features? And yes, this is the case because we offer the course um, through our onboarding feature, which is specific to our workflow for LibGuides and Lean Library Futures packages. It's not something that we offer within um, Lean Library Access. Um, so, so yes, but does anyone else have any questions that I can cover before we wrap up? We've definitely still got time for them, so. Yeah, I think that'll be it for today. I don't see any other questions coming in but if you have any questions um please do email us and we'll get back to you um but yeah thanks very much for everyone joining today and thanks again becca for a really insightful webinar um into a uh, site and the sage campus integration and what's coming next i didn't want to um interrupt you when you were going well there at the roadmap um but yeah everyone please register for our next uh product update webinar which is on the 7th of may uh, where we'll be going through the print alternatives in more depth um, but yeah, once again, thanks very much. And I hope you all have a great day. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.